So had some tough questions for Attorney General Merrick Garland at the House Judiciary hearing yesterday. Joining us to discuss, Republican Congressman from Oregon, member of the House Judiciary Committee, Cliff Bentz. Uh, Congressman, welcome to the program. The hearing yesterday when we were watching, it actually kind of got off to a rocky start when Congressman Jim Jordan wanted to play a video of those parents expressing concerns at school board meetings. That was shut down by Chairman Jerry Nadler. Why was it so important for Republicans to play that video for the Attorney General? Well, of course, the attorney general has decided to, uh, I hate to use the right word, but sick the FBI on, on parents that have the audacity to show up at school board meetings and express their opinions. And so we wanted to show uh, America and those watching the interesting hearing uh, that parents are uh, important when it comes to kids and education and, and uh, making sure that, that uh, what they want their kids taught is taught, and so we, we wanted to show that uh, that video, and uh, we weren't allowed to do it. Pretty disappointing. Yeah, it was released on Twitter, so we were able to see it. But essentially, it was a number of instances where parents were expressing their concerns about what was being taught in their students' classroom. Uh, they were doing so in, in an appropriate manner, uh, just uh, speaking out. Uh, but I did want to get your reaction to a specific instance. Uh, this was presented by your colleague, Congressman Chip Roy, about a rape case in Loudoun County, Virginia. Here's that moment. Watch. The girl who had been raped sodomized in the bathroom of a high school by a dude wearing a skirt, that father reacted. Now, that father reacted by simply using a derogatory wor word. Would that statement have bothered you if your daughter had been raped, if somebody said that it didn't occur? Again, I, I don't know anything about the facts of this case. Are you aware that Loudoun County failed to report this sexual assault according to state law? And are you investigating this? Again, I'm sorry. I don't know anything about this case. Are you aware that the Virginia General Assembly, run by Democrats, voted for and Democrat Governor Ralph Northam signed a bill allowing schools to refrain from reporting instances of sexual battery, stalking, violation of a protective order, and violent threats occurring on school property? Is the FBI investigating how this may conflict with the Violence Against Women Act or conflict with your own domestic terrorism uh, efforts? I don't know anything about the Virginia legislation. Congressman, were you surprised by the fact that the AG had not been briefed on this case in particular? You know, actually I was, because I, I had heard about the case, and uh, it's uh, shocking at so many levels. I don't blame the parent for that kind of response. Uh, I, I really don't. And I was uh, uh, disappointed in, in, in that the Attorney General didn't know about it. I, I would also say, if you look at the memo that the Attorney General sent out, uh, focusing the FBI's attention on parents, you have to ask why isn't that same degree of attention being given to so many other challenging issues that this country is facing? I mean, really, uh, the prioritization is uh, should be embarrassing, to be honest with you. Yeah. Uh, you yourself had five minutes to question the attorney general yesterday, uh, and I know that they're very strict on that limited time. Were you satisfied with the answers that you heard from the AG? Well, no, I wasn't. But I, I have to say, uh, it's a it's a challenging position the attorney general finds himself in. But frankly, he needs to be focusing on the huge challenges our country faces. And the one I was trying to bring to his attention is the uh, the cartels that are moving into the United States and hiding behind the legalization of marijuana and cannabis, mm -hmm. and uh, and basically hiding in plain sight and and using the thousands of people that are coming across the border illegally as basically slave labor in these in these uh, cannabis operations. And this is a huge problem. I brought that to his attention. Sadly, I, we, didn't, we didn't get an opportunity because of the short amount of time to get an answer. You know, you talk about, of course, what's happening at our southern border. You being in the state of Oregon, are you noticing what's happening down south impacting residents in your own district? Well, absolutely. We have, as I, I mentioned, the, literally the estimate from law enforcement is up to 20,000 people in in several of my counties that are uh, assumed to be uh, here illegally and are being used as as uh, indentured servants living in the most squalid the most squalid of conditions and uh, and and uh, we don't know whether they're being forced to work at gunpoint we do know that uh, that the violence is is uh, occurring people have been found murdered 
Um, but the numbers are are daunting. Uh, up to 20,000 in one county people from across the border working in these illegal marijuana and cannabis grows. Some are legal. I want to point that out. And, mm -hmm. and I think those folks are trying their best. But frankly, our state of Oregon is being overwhelmed. Hmm. A really fascinating headline that you don't often hear about, but we appreciate you coming on the show and speaking out about it. Congressman Cliff Bentz of Oregon joining us live. Congressman, thank you. Have a great weekend. Thank you, Emma. Thank you.